There are a number of different scriptures that I'm going to look at this morning. So if you want to follow along, I will invite you to do that. You might want to place your fingers in Isaiah around the 50s. And um, Jeremiah and Revelation is where we're going to start. And then a bunch in John. And uh, one in Matthew and one in the Psalms. So I'll give you a little bit of time to turn. Or you can just, uh, you can just listen to God's word. But uh, a number of different scriptures that deal with the water of life. Or living water. And I'll explain where I came up with this uh, after we get started. But let's go to the Lord and pray together. Lord, give us life through your word. Pray that that wouldn't just be something that we memorize with the kids and are able to say, but that would be the truth of our lives. Thank you so much for your mercy and grace. Thank you for loving us, for coming and opening up our hearts. Lord, I pray for those that will hear this message today, Lord, that you will open the eyes of their hearts and their minds to to see who you are and that we will drink deeply from the fountain of living water. Lord, I do pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. You are my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Holy name we pray. Amen. Today is kind of a reminder sermon. A a sermon that reminds us of something that I think we we all know or we've heard. But it's one of those things that it's good to hear again. It's good to hear every so often. And it all started when I was reading, I was finishing up this uh, devotional New Testament that I have. that gives you a reading gives you readings for each day, and at the end of the year, it was ending with Revelation. And I could not get this verse out of my mind and heart. And I felt like it was something I was supposed to explore, and it led me to all these other verses. And the verse that I couldn't get out of my mind was Revelation twenty two seventeen. Revelation twenty two seventeen says, The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. And as I started looking into that verse, take the free gift of the water of life, I was led to all these other verses that talk about the living water from the Lord God. One of those verses talks about the problem we find ourselves in. That's in Jeremiah. In the Old Testament, Jeremiah 2.13, the Lord says this, My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Looking into it some more, I found Isaiah 55.1. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Also in Isaiah 58.11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Isaiah 44, 3. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. In the Gospel of John, Jesus is talking to this woman at the well. And he says, Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. John chapter 6, 
35, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. John 7, 37, it's the Feast of Tabernacles. And it says, on the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. And then the verse that we sang just a little bit ago, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Dip sail. Dipseo is the Hebrew word meaning to suffer thirst. Figuratively, those who are said to thirst, who painfully feel their want of and eagerly long for those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strengthened. Now I go back to that verse. My, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. It made me think of this stuff here. Any of you like to eat this? Lucy loves this kind of stuff. It's, it's uh, ramen or ramen noodles, however you say that. In this particular version, you just kind of open the top and you pour in hot water. I found that the Keurig works really well. You put it under the Keurig and hit the button, and uh, the water comes in. But if I were to open this and uh, eat it now, it's all dry and hard and nasty, and the chicken flavor is just, ugh. It needs the water to bring it to life, to make it something that you want to eat, and something that will give you a little bit I suppose, of nourishment for the day. Our hearts can become bitter and hard and like the stuff inside here by the sinfulness of us, the sinfulness of life, the sinfulness of the world. And especially if we're disconnected from God and we're building our own cisterns, our hearts become hard and dry. And he's saying, I want to fill you with the living water that will give you life and make you right. I talked about this in Sunday school, but we as Americans have tended to divide in our thinking life into different, different realms. There's the sacred realm where we believe that God is involved and, and he's part of that. And then there's the, the non-sacred or the secular realm where, well, that's where real life happens. And the Bible never makes that split. It says all of life is sacred. When we think that way, we, we say, okay, Pastor Jefferson, I'm with you. While I'm here in church, I trust in God, and I need the living water to make me, um, make me well. But once I leave here, I'm on my own. I'm building my own cistern. And God says your own cisterns in your own strength and your own power are broken. This is just a reminder sermon that we have an integrated life. We have one life. And God desires every part of all of our lives to be centered in Him so that He pours the living water of His Holy Spirit into us. And Hanover Church, may we live lives filled with the living water that will then overflow to those around us. May we live lives filled with the living water of the Spirit of God so that it then overflows to those around us. It's interesting, the cisterns that we can try and build. He wants us to be united in a relationship with Him and not the cistern of religion. That John seven thirty seven passage where it says, on the last and greatest day of the festival. So that was the festival of tabernacles where they would build the, the shelters and they would live in those shelters uh, throughout the festival. And there was different ceremonies throughout in, the, in Jerusalem involving water, 
where they would pour out these, these water libations throughout the week as part of their religious ceremony. And it's very interesting that in the midst of this annual religious ceremony, Jesus says, and this is also interesting, it says, He stood and said in a loud voice. And I've read from the commentators that that means he shouted. He, and he wanted people to hear. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, Jesus, and drink. And what Jesus was saying there is the cistern of religion is not what he's interested in. He's interested in the cistern of living water that comes from a relationship. And we tend to think of that. Ah, oh, if I go to church, if I'm on this committee, if I do this, I do that, I do my religion thing, then I'm okay. Well, those things are good. Please be on committees. Please come to worship. Yes, I want you to do that. But it's about the heart. Like last week. And being filled with the Spirit of God and in a relationship with Christ, that, that will fulfill our thirst and overflow to others. Another cistern that we can get caught up in is the cistern of, of things. Well, if I only had this, or if I only had that, and well, I don't have this, so I'm kind of bitter, and I'm becoming dry, and my heart becomes hard like a sun-scorched land. Remember that, Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Stuff will never satisfy the inner deep thirst in our soul because there's no stuff that will fill that. The only thing that will fill that is God himself, is Jesus Christ, and the living water of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want us to build and draw from the cisterns of religion, the cisterns of stuff, or any other cisterns. The woman at the well, she had come and, and uh, Jesus asked her for a drink. And she was really taken aback by that because he was a Jewish man and she was a woman and they weren't supposed to interact. And what are you doing? And he says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. This was a particular woman who had been filling her cisterns with relationships and people. And it could be anything. It could be power or fame or money or the pleasures of the world. But this particular woman had all these relationships with different men. And Jesus said, those are not the cisterns that are going to satisfy you. The only one that will is the living water of the Holy Spirit that I can give to you. So may we not fall prey to building our lives on the cisterns of religion or of things or of anything else other than drinking from the well of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to get a, give you a picture of what that looks like. A picture of what it's like to drink from the fountain of living water. And this is that picture. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. That's Psalm 1. And then it goes on to talk about the one who has tried to live on building their own cisterns, the broken ones. Not so the wicked. They're not like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season. They're like chaff, 
that the wind blows away. Now you might say, well, we were just talking about in Sunday school about our thoughts and our actions. And and it says, you know, the one who delights in the law, Lord, meditates on it day and night. I don't do that. No, we don't. But Jesus Christ did. Jesus was the one who did not step in the wicked way or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the company of mockers. His delight was on God's law day and night. And when we receive him and when we follow after him, we are in Christ. And the picture of us is of a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. So the question for you and for me today is in our day, in our hour to hour living, are we going to start our our thinking and our actions with drinking from the living water or with doing things in our own strength, which God says are broken cisterns? I've been reading a lot of A.W. Tozier the last couple days and He said this, he was speaking specifically about prayer, but it relates to everything. He says, a spiritual journey awaits us as God reshapes our petitions, molds us more into the image of his son, and brings closure to the matter prayed about in such a way that his holiness, his mercy, his love, and his glory are ever magnified. If our everyday lives are filled with the barrenness of busyness and no serious urgency to pray, then we miss the wonderful journey of being conformed to the image of Christ and knowing our God more intimately. Did you hear what he said there? If our everyday lives are filled with the barrenness of busyness. In other words, if we start with, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to use my own strength to work and build these broken cisterns, he says we will miss out on what God has for him, for us. As opposed to if we start with, Lord, thank you for another day. What do you have for me today? I want to drink from your well. I want to draw strength from your well so that others can see you, so that it overflows, so that your glory and your holiness and your mercy and your love are magnified. You see the difference there is two different ways of going about the day. Now, you know, I'm speaking to myself and I'm challenging you to to listen and go along with me that we don't go in our own strength. Now, we don't try and build cisterns of our own because they're, they're broken. Remember, I said this is a reminder sermon. May we drink deeply from the well of salvation. May we drink deeply from the love of God so that the Holy Spirit fills us and we're not dry and stale and useless like this, but we're filled and refreshed and have a heart that cries out for God. And cries out for others. The call of Christ today, the call of Christ in 2018 is come. Let the one who is thirsty come and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? Hanover Church, Pastor Jefferson, may our lives be filled with the living water that comes from a relationship with Jesus so that it overflows to those around us. I'm going to start with a prayer that that Tozier wrote and then we'll close as I pray together. Let's pray. O God, I have tasted thy goodness and it has both satisfied me and made me thirsty for more. I am painfully conscious of my need of further grace. I am ashamed of my lack of desire. O God, the triune God, I want to want thee. I long to be filled with longing. I thirst to be made more thirsty still. 
Show me thy glory, I pray thee, that so I may know thee indeed. Begin in mercy a new work of love within me. Say to my soul, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Then give me grace to rise and follow thee up from this misty lowland where I have wandered so long. In Jesus' name. Lord God, I thank you so much for faithful Christians that have gone before us like A.W. Tozier and left those words that we can echo. But more than him, I thank you for sending your son Jesus his life and death and resurrection. And, and I thank you for live, leaving us with the written word. The living and active sword, which is also a fountain of life. Lord, I pray that our souls would be satisfied by drinking from your well of love and mercy and grace. We don't want to be stale and and useless like the noodles inside this cup we want to be full and, and refreshed and nourishing to those around us and filled with your love and mercy overflowing so that we live lives that, that show others who you are so Lord I pray that we would drink deep from your well I pray, Lord, that our thirst would only be satisfied in you and not the things of this world, that you would turn our eyes from worthless things on a daily basis. Lord, if there's anyone listening that has never fully bowed their knee to you and in, in faith and trusted in you and drank from that well, I pray that today would be the day of salvation, that they would simply repent, not with just words, but with a true a turning of their heart, saying, I trust you, Lord, I need, a sal I need a Savior. Trust what you did on the cross. Forgive me. Receive me. Make me new. Lord, for those that have received you and bowed their knee in repentance to you a long time ago, renew us. Refresh us. Don't let our hearts get hard. Soften us with the water of life. Overflow us with the joy of the Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. We need you, Lord. We love you. Praise you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen.